Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I'm going to show you some techniques for creating this liquid glass effect. So quite a lot of interesting ideas here that I think you're going to have fun exploring. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Resolve. I'm going to make a new Fusion composition. I'm going to call this liquid glass. My project settings are 19, 20, 10, 80, so that's what the composition is going to be. Five seconds duration is good. I'm going to go with 30 frames a second. Create, double click to open it up. Come to the media pool. I've got three assets that I want to bring in. Drag those in. Don't want to merge any of them. So this one is a rainbow gradient. So let's call this a rainbow. This one here is my image from pexels.com. I'm going to call that image. And this is my mat. So I'm going to call this mat. I will show you how to make this mat, but it's a little bit too much for this tutorial, I think, which is already going to be quite long. I will just say that because it's an image sequence, a sequence of PNGs, you will need to bring it in via your media storage. So bring it in like that. But the important thing is you'll need to click on this menu here and set the frame display mode to sequence. Otherwise, it'll come in as a still frame. So set the frame display mode to sequence and then you can drag it into your media pool like so. So now this mat is only 40 frames long and what we need to do is come over and hold last frame for say 300 frames. Okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to merge my image over a background. So I'm going to make a background node. I'm going to merge my image over the top. Let's take a look at the result. Now we need to set the size to 0.4 and let's come to the first frame. Let's keyframe the center. Let's set the Y value to 0.4. Let's come forward to frame 30. Let's set that value to 0.3. Let's come to the end and set that value to 0.75. And this is going to give us a bit of a pan over the image like that. So a little bit of a jolt as the effect starts and then it's going to pan down like that. And you might want to come over to the spline editor and select all the points and shift S to smooth them. Next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at my mat. We've already extended it. So I'm going to add a transform node. I'm going to set the size to 0.9 and the aspect ratio to 0.8. I'm going to add a merge node. I'm going to use the original mat as the foreground and let's look at it and let's switch the operator to X or and you see now we've got this sort of edge mat. I'm just going to start labeling these processes with underlays. It's not something you need to do, but it'll certainly help you understand my flow as we go through. The next thing I want to do is look at my image and I want to put it inside the mat. So let's do that. Let's add a new merge and let's take the original mat and add it as the secondary input and let's switch the operator to mask and then if you look we've got our image inside that mat. So now let's think about our displacement. So I'm going to add a displace tool and I'm going to take the mat output into the displace foreground input. Let's take a look at what's happening here. So I want to set the center to 0.4 on both X and Y. Let's set the offset to negative 0.5. Let's have 1.1 for the refraction and 3 for the spread. And hopefully you can already see we're starting to get that sort of glassy effect. What I'm going to do now is add a second displace node. And instead of using the main mat, I'm going to use our edge mat as the foreground input for that. Let's take a look at that. Let's, in this case, set the center to 0.6 and 0.6 on X and Y. Again, let's set the offset to negative 0.5. Let's set the refraction strength to 0.25. And let's set the spread, in this case, to 1. Now, we've got a little bit of an issue at the beginning with the way the blobs appear. And to sort that out, I'm just going to keyframe the refraction strength of displace one. So I'm going to come to frame 30 and I'm going to keyframe that at 1.1. Let's come to frame zero and keyframe that at zero. 
and then that's they're just going to be a little bit more blob like like that as they grow okay so the next thing i want to do is i want to make a soft version of this edge mat here so i'm going to add a blur and i'm going to take the output of that edge mat into the blur i'm going to set the blur value to 15 and i'm going to add a merge and i'm going to take my mat and add it to the foreground of the merge so then if we look at that what i'm going to do again is switch the operator to mask and you can see we've, we're just blurring the inside we're still getting our, our hard edge on the outside so i'm going to use this in the following way i'm going to add in my rainbow effect so let's find him bring my rainbow effect over here just to remind us it looks like that i'm just going to process this a little bit before we add it in so i'm going to add a displace i'm going to set the offset again to negative 0.5 i'm going to set the strength to 20 and the spread to three and we need something to drive that so let's have a fast noise don't want to merge that sorry and i want to take the fast noise into the displaced foreground let's take a look at it we just need to set the scale of the fast noise to four and to give ourselves a bit of animation we're going to set the seethe rate to 0.1 Let's take a look at that. So we're getting this effect here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that displace. I'm going to add a merge. I'm going to take the output of this little process here, pipe it into the merge. And then I can take my soft edge mat and use it as the effect mask input for this. So let's take a look at that. So now we've got the, this effect just on the edge and we can switch the blend mode to color dodge and just reduce that gain to something like 0.35 it's going to give us that nice sort of iridescence on the edge you know you can dial that up or down to taste so i've just taken a moment to do a little bit of tidy up using some underlays to isolate these different operations so that's our soft edge mat there the blur and the merge we've got our iridescence there and we've got our displacement there i think it's probably now time to add this back in again over the background so i'm going to add another merge after this one here and i'm just going to find my merged background and i'm going to pipe that into that merge there just add in a pipe router just to tidy it up so let's look at this obviously we need to swap that so that's command or control t so now that's in the background and here is our effect starting to take shape now there's another process that i want to add in just before this displacement so i'm going to move all this along a bit to make ourselves a bit of space so after this merge here let's have a look at that i want to add in a new merge so new merge like this and i want to take my background this one here and add it to this merge here like this so what i want to do with this merge is i want to flip the vertical like that and then i want to mask it with my soft edge mat so take this soft edge mat output into the effect mask input of this merge and i've just added in a little underlay to call that edge refraction so if we come back and look at our final result here and we toggle this edge refraction you can see that that sort of upside down version of the background is actually quite a useful addition in there we can certainly adjust that we could for example reduce the alpha gain so it gets brighter like that i think i quite like that i think probably go for about 0.5 here and another thing we can do while we're here i'm just going to give myself a little bit more space to do it so after this merge here the one where we're isolating the insert as it were i'm going to add a brightness contrast let's again look at our final result here so with this brightness contrast i can for example just reduce the gamma just to get a little bit more density in there maybe 0.8 is good so actually probably a good idea now is to add in the text so let's come over here and let's drop in a, another merge at the end here let's add the text tool i'm going to use futura and i'm going to use uh, condensed medium for it and i'm just going to type my text let's uh, pipe it in over the top like that and see what it's looking like let's just increase the size so it's filling the bubble a little bit more something like this let's just drop in a transform after the text what i want to do here is i want to animate the position of the text so come to the first frame keyframe the center set the y value to 0.4 
Come forward to frame 30, set that value to 0.57. Come forward to frame 70 and set it to 0.5. And you'll probably want to select those keyframes in the spline editor and smooth them as we did before. Just a step that I missed out here. So obviously we need this text to be inside the bubble. So we'll need to use a mask here. So I'm going to add a merge after that transform. And I need to use my original mat as the foreground for that merge like so, and let's switch to in. So now the text is inside that mat, as you can see as it comes up like that, looking quite good. Let's come back over here. What I also want to do before that merge is to add in a displace. So after the transform, add in a displace, and the source for this displace is going to be our soft edge mat. So let's find that. We're going to take that into the displace foreground. Let's come back and have a look at that. Let's, in fact, let's look at the final output here. Let's set up the displace. So let's have a refraction strength of about 0.13. And I think that's probably enough, actually. Let's have a look at it. Yes, yeah, so you can see that that's being nicely displaced with the bubbles as it rises up like that. And as it hits the top there, just quite a nice sort of extra detail we've got there. So I've just made an underlay for my text. And what I want to do is I want to show you how that if you wanted, you could add in some blur. Now, I think probably the sensible place to do it would be before the iridescence and after this displacement. So let's try it there. So after that displace, we're going to drop in a blur node. And if we increase the blur, you can see we're blurring everything. We don't want to do that. So let's use our soft edge mat as an effect mask for the blur. And now you're seeing we're just blurring the edges, but we don't actually want that. We want to do the opposite. So let's come to settings and apply mask inverted. And now you see we're blurring just that inside there, and we're leaving the edges fairly nice and crisp. Obviously, we also have the problem that we're blurring out over the background. So after that, let's add another merge. And in this case, we want to use our original mat from over there as the foreground input to this new merge here. And again, we want to set the operator to mask. So you see now we're masking off the blur that's going outside the mat. So let's come back and look at the result with our text. We may or may not like that blur effect. Personally, I think it's nicer just to keep the full full on glass, but it's entirely up to you. So anyway, uh, that's the effect. I hope it's given you some ideas as to how to develop this a bit further yourself. There's loads more details we could add, but I think from the point of view of keeping this tutorial fairly simple, that's a good place to stop. As I mentioned, I will do a quick follow-up tutorial in which I'll show you how to create that blob mat. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.